So you might have noticed we focused a lot in this course about income and the business side of things. Well, the reason for that is, of course, income is very important to your location independence. Now, the other important part is not running out of money. In other words, making more than you spend. And so I want to share some tips here about keeping your expenses down. Some of this might be obvious for you if you're a veteran traveler, but I'm hoping there's at least one or two things that will be new information for even the most veteran of travelers here. So the first thing is the three months rule. What I mean by this is try to spend three months in each location, at least where you're based. Um, I did this for my first well, five, six countries I lived in, um, where I'd say between two months and about six months. And I found three months is a great sweet spot where it's still interesting if you're just there for the novelty, right? There's lots to do, but you keep your expenses down because you can get um, like a longer term sort of mini lease on places or find a longer term sublet, gyms, co-working spaces, all those kind of memberships. Three months is usually no problem to get a fair price. Two weeks a month you usually get upcharged quite a bit. The other thing is there's always, always more costs involved with moving than you think. So you think, oh yeah, it's a 200 euro flight to just change countries, but it's always more. Not only financially in terms of maybe taxis, short-term accommodation and things like that, but also time, which takes you away from earning money because you always have a resettling time somewhere new. So three months is kind of the sweet spot in terms of productivity up and expenses down. Now, the other thing I wanna really emphasize when you're picking where you go is try to avoid oceans. Oceans will screw with your money. What I mean by that is I've seen it's kind of crazy to me in retrospect, so, but it, people did it. I've seen people who are on a really tight budget trying to be location independent, um, do things like spend their first month in South America and then go to Asia and then go to Europe. And each of these flights is, cause they're also one way tickets and sort of not on the best schedule always or getting a deal. Each of these flights is eating up maybe a month of their living expenses. It's crazy, so don't do that. Uh, try to think long term in, in terms of maybe a year. Now, that's not to say you can't change, of course, right? Um, this whole this lifestyle is about freedom. But if you think, okay, I'd like to spend a year in Europe or at least six months in Europe, uh, that gives you six months of very low travel expenses, short little flights, right? Uh, rather than a big uh, transatlantic or across the Pacific or whatever flight. So that's going to really add to your cost. So that's, again three months sweet spot and avoid oceans. So that's in terms of planning. Um, what about when you're actually there? One big thing is avoid tourist traps. Um, this, this is kind of bordering on travel advice. It doesn't really matter how long you're going, but tourist traps will screw you. And if you get hit with a couple scams early on, it can really one sour you to a place big time and also eat up your budget. So these will come in three different ways. One is straight up crimes. Two is straight up immoral screw jobs. And the third is just, meh, not a good deal for tourists. Like locals wouldn't do it. So let's start with actually the third. Usually in a city, you'll have kind of tourist restaurants and local restaurants. Same goes with bars, often with taxis. Like in a lot of cities, if you talk to a local, they'll have a number for a taxi service that's a lot different than what the tourists tend to get recommended at hotels, and it's often a lot cheaper. Um, restaurants, of course, right? If you're looking, the places that have menus in six languages, occasionally you find a gem that's a fair price, but almost always, again, it's thriving on tourist business, overpriced, not a good deal. Um, in general, you know, ask, ask around like a great question is just you can even just stop people on the street in your neighborhood say you move into your apartment uh, ask people who are in the area just where do you shop for groceries even because you'll this is another thing that you'll find you have kind of your premium grocery stores and then your different tiers and sometimes the price is 30 or 40 percent different so you might be at the spanish whole foods and not know it where you're paying you know twice as much as you would if you just went to I don't know, the Spanish Trader Joe's or Costco equivalent or whatever. Um, so that kind of thing, right? And that, that carries over into another tip that I'm going to get into after, which is do like the locals do. Uh, but back, back to the scam. So first is sort of just 
not good deals. Second thing is this like really immoral ripoffs. Money exchange places are terrible for this. Some taxis, occasionally, it depends on the country, but you still do have places who also run pretty hardcore scams like restaurants or bars where they'll just not show you a menu and charge inflated prices. Um, for that kind of stuff, always read like a Lonely Planet or online forums before you go somewhere and usually you can find all the scams. Um, but then you have things like money exchange is almost always a ripoff. What you'll find in most places is that nine out of 10 are a screw job and there's one out of 10 that's just a great fair deal. So that's kind of how it is in Prague. You can go to money exchange places here in the main kind of tourist areas that will give you 13 crowns for every euro. You should get 27 crowns a euro. So they're literally stealing over half of your money, which is insane, right? So think, you know, you get off the plane, you're, you're not really sure, you're just like, oh, I need some money, and you go and exchange it, and you maybe do $1,000 when you get here, and you've lost 500 bucks. That would suck, so don't do that. Airport exchanges are always a ripoff. Just use the ATM at the airport. It's so much better. Or get some currency before something, but just don't use the money exchange places at airports ever. Please don't. I hate them so much. And the last is the the straight up crimes. Um, so this is things like um, pickpocketing, petty theft. It really varies by country and that's actually what makes it so dangerous. When I lived in Barcelona, I saw people robbed right in front of me. Not, not the, you know, knife, give me your money rob, but the, I saw a guy come up to, there was two guys in their 50s, pretty big guys, and two women, their wives, and they were walking down the street and this guy about my age dressed in like a dress shirt and jeans walked up just grabbed the woman's neck ripped off her necklace and ran and before anyone could sort of realize what happened he was 50 meters out um same with phones you know people would go up and someone would have their phone on the table they'd be eating along the beach people go up they do a kind of distraction they put down their, uh, they have a survey form. Anyone with a survey form in Europe is trying to rip you off or cheat you on something. Um, so they put the survey form over the phone and then they'd kind of nudge it off together and then they'd run off. And by the time people were like, wait, where'd my phone go? They were, I actually kind of, the angle I was at saw the whole thing. They had ran around the corner, passed it to another guy and then they split up. So even if they found the woman, she'd be like, I didn't do it. Um, so this happens a lot, you notice, to like German tourists because Germans... In Germany, you could leave your iBook on a table and go to the bathroom. And in most German cities, it would be fine because they just, it is. Uh, so that's something that can actually make it more dangerous is you get to a new country and you're used to your last one. So you don't really know the safety and you might have patterns of leaving your stuff around or whatever. Um, so really just be careful with your stuff. Generally, again, look online before you go to a place in terms of that safety. Um, yeah, be weary, especially when you're first going somewhere, like you're moving somewhere and you have all your stuff. That's when you want to be most careful in terms of, you know, if you do get robbed or you do lose something, it's everything, right? Passports, laptop, all your stuff. And if you're on a tight budget, I mean, if I had been robbed when I got to Costa Rica, I would have been done. Like I did not have reserve funds for replacing my computer and everything. Um, so you know, something just to be aware of. Personally, if I'm just getting to a new city, I will splurge a little and do the taxi hotel for the first night, especially if I get in kind of later, um, just because I get my stuff safe. I can, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, taking a bus from the train station late at night with all my stuff or whatever it is. It's just, to me, not worth the risk because if you lose your stuff, it really sucks. So I mentioned before doing like the locals do, and this will save you money in all kinds of areas. Mainly food and drink is big. So if you, basically it's as simple as it sounds, right? Think of how the locals would um, eat. So if you go to Italy, what do Italian people eat? You know, you don't need a guidebook. Pasta, olives, meat, pizza, um, cheeses, wine. So if you have that stuff in wine, or in wine, you know, you can see what I remember from when I lived in Italy, right? Uh, wine literally would be a dollar a liter at the grocery store and they'd have these big 
like local wineries and you just fill up your own jars. It was insane. Um, so, you know, if you're in Italy, I would recommend eating that way. When I was there, it was so cheap, like amazing balsamic vinegar, great olive oil, cheeses, meats for a third probably of what I would have paid in Canada. Uh, now, if I wanted to get Mexican food while I was there, I probably would have paid an extreme amount, right? Um, and so by sticking to the local stuff, you'll always get a much better deal. And I also think it's, it's a lot better in terms of your experience there, right? It's, I mean, not to be one of these travelers like, I'm all authentic, I'm like a local. But if you're in Italy, you know, have the wine, have the food, it makes sense, right? Um, yeah, that just makes sense to me. So it'll give you a better experience and it will save you some money and just generally, I think, is a good way to figure it out quickly in terms of what's going to be fair prices and everything like that. You could apply the same logic to housing as well in terms of neighborhoods, right? So I tend to like the centers of city. So I haven't necessarily done this myself in everywhere I've been, but if you, if you look at a lot of cities, the expats and the, the digital nomads and the tourists like tend to stay right in the center because they want to be where the action is and pay a serious premium where if you go just slightly out of the center um, or just a different part of the center even where the locals would stay, not, not a bad area, like the nice area the locals would want because usually locals wouldn't want to be in the tourist area, you'll usually save a bunch of money and also things around you will all be a bit cheaper because it will all be you know restaurants for locals, bars for locals, grocery stores for locals. So everything's gonna be a more reasonable price. So the last tip here is just to negotiate. For some of us, obvious. For others, not so much. You'd be surprised actually how much you can get. Just asking for something tends to get you something. For example, if you're looking at housing, often people will have a posted price for a month. But if you're saying three, why not ask for a 15% discount? Or just say, hey, could you give me a discount? And almost always people will give you something. You might get a response, I've got this a lot, where they say, I don't do discounts, but you know what, you can have 10%, which is 10%. That's huge, right? It's not huge, but it's worth it. Um, lots of things, you know, gyms, co-working spaces, short-term things you need to join. Uh, look, you know, find the owner, talk to the owner, offer cash, say, hey, I'm just here for a month, six weeks, three months. Uh, can I just pay upfront cash and we can do a deal? Like, I don't want to sign a contract, whatever. Usually you can get a better deal. Um, so ask, you, all, you have nothing to lose and almost always it will work out at least a little bit in your favor. Last here, oh, I, I don't remember writing this down, but I've got to, it's, it's on the cue card is, uh, let less attractive people buy you meals and gifts. So apparently this has worked really well for some travelers. Um, just find locals with money who are less attractive than you and let them buy you things. Always a way. <laughs>